In part 34, we did our first deployment of our Django project to App Platform on the DigitalOcean console. Now, the reason we did it this way is so that we could actually just follow along the prompts that the console gave to just create the application. This means that it's not nearly as ambiguous as it could be. But what it also does is it actually leaves us sort of in a place where we have to use the console to make changes. And if we do make changes, we're not necessarily monitoring those changes using Git, which is what we want, right? So we already do that with version control with our code. We should now do it with our actual infrastructure that's running that code. And so to do this, there's a few steps that we need to make happen. First and foremost, I'll reference these right here. Right, so we have a reference blog post. All of these will be in the document, the description below. Um, so the reference blog post, that's, we're going to loosely follow in just a moment. Of course, I'm assuming that you already have a DigitalOcean account. If you don't, get one and get a free hundred dollar credit right there with a new account. Next, you need to install DOCTL. This is the DigitalOcean command line tool or the command line interface. And the thing that we want to use this for is to actually not only do authentication, but also to actually create a new application for us based off of pretty much all of our old one. Now, this also means that we need an API token to do this. So it's going to be fairly straightforward on how we're going to actually execute all of these things because it's going to be based off of a pre-existing application. So part of the reason I actually do use the console for new projects as well is to get the format that DigitalOcean prefers for the app specification. We'll talk about what that means in a second, but the idea here is we'll use the console from our old project. So if you haven't deployed that old project, I do recommend you do that. Now on the Coding for Entrepreneurs repo, there will definitely be at some point deploy this project button, uh, but right now it actually lays out how essentially how we're going to be deploying this application in a moment using the command line itself. But I will have one where there's a button and you can deploy TriJango 3.2, much like we did with that fast API microservice. Okay, so at this point, I recommend you pause the video and install DOCTL. If you are using a Mac, you can do brew install DOCTL or DOCTL. You can install that and you just want to make sure that you can do doctl and i think version and that right there will give you the proper version that's being used uh, it doesn't actually matter which one that you're using just make sure that you are using one of the newer ones so update it if you need and so after you do that we now need to get an api token and then do the authentication okay so let's jump in to the console again and I'm gonna navigate into the API section here. And we're gonna go ahead and create a personal access token. Now you can make as many tokens as you want. Just make sure that you know to manage them because they will have access to the DigitalOcean API or more specifically, pretty much all of your services on DigitalOcean. So you can actually cause a lot of havoc to your own projects if you don't keep these things safe. Okay, so now let's go to make one. I'll just call this the TD CLI token. It actually doesn't matter what the name is. In this case, I just wanna know it's something that I could for sure delete or change in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this token. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start the authentication process, which I have the reference right there. And it's really easy to figure out what the reference is because if you try to use any of these apps without being, or any of the actual functionality to this command line interface without having a token installed, especially if it's your first time, it's gonna tell you that, which is cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually create one. So do CTL off and in it. And this time I'm gonna add in a context. So I wanna use this context throughout, which is why I actually add the context. It's made so you can actually use different tokens. So if you are managing someone else's account, you can absolutely use the context for that. Paste in your token here, you won't see it or anything like that, but it will validate it just like that. And then I wanna do, uh, do CTL and auth, and then switch 
and then context being main. So that switches that to that main context. So my future commands for do CTL, like do CTL apps list, should actually list out all of my applications on here. The cool thing about this too, is I can give a format and do something like spec.name and ID, just like that. And it will actually just give me a list of the service spec name and its appropriate ID in there, which these two things are gonna come in handy later. Uh, but for now, that's kind of the idea is you need to be able to see the apps in your project here. If you don't have those, if you can't see them, that means you need to go back and maybe check out our reference post and all of the documentation related to do CTL. So now what we need to do is actually create our app. So this means in our local project, you should create a folder called .do and a file called app.yaml. This is the file we need to actually fill out. So as it stands right now, it's an invalid file. So if I try to use it, let's go ahead and do that with do ctl apps create dash dash spec and dot do slash app dot yaml. It's gonna attempt to use this, right? And so right off the bat, it's saying, hey, we've got an invalid field name. This is actually not that surprising. Remember how we did spec dot name up here? Here's all the valid names, right? So try Django 3.2 is invalid as far as DigitalOcean is concerned, not as far as YAML is concerned. So if you don't know YAML, I'll explain a little bit about it in a moment. But the idea is we need an actual uh, URL encoded, kind of like a slug field in here. So I'll go ahead and do try Django and 3.2, um, let's say via CLI, some ridiculous name here. And so I would go to create this one. And what do you know? It actually does create it. I gave no information on it whatsoever. But what it did do is it actually gave me a name here. So if I go up a couple more times and hit enter, I can actually see that it is creating that and it does give me this ID. So going forward, this is actually not how I'm gonna write out this command. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use this command only slightly different. So going back in here, I'm just gonna write it out. You can use this as reference as you like. So here's that command. And then we can do format. This is what the output would be. It's the same output that we saw before, which was spec.name and ID. But of course, I literally just want the ID. Again, bear with me for a moment. You'll figure out why in a second. So just the format of ID. And then we also want no header, okay? So really, I just want the ID and that's it. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to wrap this around parentheses with a dollar sign and around that I'm going to put quotes just like that and then we're going to go ahead and put echo right in front of this and then a command of app-id.txt okay now why did I do that well the reason I have that is because I want to be able to delete this command. So dot do CTL and then delete. And this is going to be the app ID. A quick way to grab it if I have a command like this is to just get what the value of that is by doing cat and just like that. Now if you're on Windows, a lot of these commands aren't going to work exactly like this. Um, but the idea is we need to specify the app ID for this project. Now this works for delete as well as update. So we have all of CRUD right here, right? So create, update, and delete. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's how I wanna do it going forward. As it stands right now, I've got my app ID in here. So we can try that out to delete it with that command. So do CTL, apps, delete, and then just write out the ID there, and we'll go ahead and say yes. Cool, delete it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it again. This time, I'm gonna use this command right here, okay? And again, if you are on a Windows machine, this might not work, so you might have to just manually write the ID for the app out. 
In the next video, we're going to show you how to do all of this stuff through GitHub, and we will all do it the exact same way. So I now run that command. Notice that it says app created. And if I do cat app ID, what do you know? There's a new ID. And I try to like take a look at my list again. And I see, hey, there it is right here, right? With the exact same ID. Now, if I try to create it again with the same ID, um, or rather with the same app name, not the same ID, but this right here, it gives me this, this invalid error, right? You can't use this name. I can only use it at this point because I'm the only one that declared it initially, which is unique across DigitalOcean is the point there. But now let's actually create our service. But I don't want to go through all the nuance that comes up with actually filling out these different things. But what I will say is databases, what are the databases we need for this? Services, what do you need to run constantly? Jobs, what needs to run before or after a deployment? ENVs, environment variables, what environment variables does your entire project need? Not necessarily one individual service or one individual job, but rather the entire thing. Now, the reason I use the console so often, especially when deploying the app for the first time, as in the type of application, like a Django application or a fast API application, is to get the spec file that DigitalOcean expects for that type of project. Again, for a Django project or a fast API project. Not this particular project, not the Try Django project, but rather Django at, at large, right? And so here we go. This is it right here. This is the spec file that I can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And I'm going to open it up into VS Code. OK, so here it is. And we can literally copy this whole thing. And I'm just going to replace everything except the name. Right. So I definitely want to keep the same name. We'll save it. And I'm going to scroll up to the other name, which is right here, and just delete that one. It's the only thing I'm going to change. Right. The other thing that I might need to change is my repo. So depending on where you are with all of this, you're going to change the repo to your current repository. Now, worst case scenario, what you can do is you can look up the app reference. This is all mentioned in the blog post that I linked before, that reference blog post. If you scroll down a bit, you will see the app spec file reference link, but you could also Google this as well but you can either use Git to clone some repo. It does not have to be a GitHub repo. You could literally clone my repo and pick the branch that you want to use, or you can use your linked GitHub account like we did earlier and the repos associated. In this case, I am using my linked GitHub account and I will actually stick with that um, going forward. And when I actually put this into my production repo, this Team CFE will no longer be Team CFE. It will be Coding for Entrepreneurs because that's what the one you'll end up being of the reference. So anyways, now that we've got this new setup, there is a few things that I need to change though. And that has to do with my environment variables. So if I scroll up into ENVs right here, I've got a lot of things that are fine. I can totally leave them. This one right here, I don't want because this is a Django allowed host. I'm just going to make it very general. I can change it after I do my first deployment. Uh, the next one is the Django secret key. This is an environment variable. Um, this is an a actual encrypted environment variable that we did in the console. So I'm just going to change this to ABC123. Now do keep in mind, anything you declare in app.yaml can be changed in the console later, and then you can replace the app.yaml file also at any time, which is another thing we will do. Um, so again, we will just change some of these passwords that I definitely do not need from this YAML file for environment variables, and I'll update them some other time. Okay, so we save that, and I think we're good to go. Now, one of the key things about app.yaml is you're like, well, uh, I still want this to be a encrypted value. So any of these values can still be encrypted. You just need to change the type, add secret. Then when it goes into production, it will be encrypted. Okay, so we will change this in just a moment. So now that we've got that, let's make sure we save everything. This time, instead of creating the app, what we want to do is we want to use that update, right? Since we do have that app ID, we can just run update. And of course, if this doesn't work, we just delete the app altogether. Oops, update 
um, and that's the ID. And then we need to actually pass in this spec file again, which is .do slash app.yaml and hit enter. And here we go. So it says not getting app. So perhaps I made a mistake with the app itself. So let's just go ahead and delete it and we will create it all over again. And it looks like this app is not found at all. So do CTL apps list. It's certainly possible that the fact that I did have an empty item here that it just didn't make anything and it deleted it. I don't think so, but we'll see. So spec.name and ID, list that out. And here it is. So let's go ahead and get that. Okay, so app deleted, and let's press up a few times and create it all over again with all of the stuff that we needed. And we'll go ahead and verify our app ID in here. Looks like that's correct, but let's go ahead and do, do CTL apps list and just verify that this is the correct one. Oops, we should still use format and spec.name and ID. Make sure those are all capitalized and spelled the correct way. So here we go. That looks to be the same key. Sure enough, it is. Okay, there we go. Um, and so at this point, it should actually be building that command because we just created it. So let's go ahead and jump into the console now, go into our apps, and this should have created my very first deployment. Looks like it is working on this deployment. Um, it may or may not work. It may or may not build. I'm not really worried about that portion just yet. What I'm worried about is actually using do CTL, the command line, to actually run this deployment, right? That's kind of the key here. In the settings, notice that we have all of the environment variables in here, and they are encrypted as shown here, okay? So this is actually now the you know proper... Um, app.yaml file that we would want to use. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy it, come back into app.yaml, paste that in here, and now I can just leave it as is and I can actually put this into my Git repository as well. So that's actually really nice. These are now encrypted, so it's okay if they're published um, because of how they're encrypted, but all the other things don't necessarily need to be encrypted or they don't need to be published. And it's really just for those environment variables. That's really the key thing here. It's not really for anything else than that. So um, that's deploying through the command line interface. Now do keep in mind that there's a number of things that we would probably want to be aware of when we run this build, and that is what we're actually deploying, right? So that's where using the console often is a good idea for your initial deployment, even if you don't use do CTL for the creating of the app. But in the future, when you make changes to it, that's when you might really want to use it. So for example, if I scroll up a bit and go to update it and just hit enter there, this should actually update that application and update the deployment as well, which means that it just canceled that, that recent build and it added a new one, right? And I can do this over and over and over again. Now, this is what we've been building towards is being able to update our application. It wasn't so much about creating it initially, because again, you might want the console for that, but it's about updating it. And that is something we want to do inside of GitHub.